Mm. Mm, mm, mm. In today's video on the Stony Ridge Farm, we're going to talk to you about gardening. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. It's absolutely awesome out here, but it's going to be a roaster. It's going to be 94 degrees with a heat index of 120 today, it seems like. So we're in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina, and today's video focus is going to be squash, okay? And you see these little squashes. My squash is just now coming in here on the Stony Ridge Farm, and I kind of wanted to walk through this as a gardening 101 video for you guys about how to grow zucchini and yellow squash. It couldn't be simpler, and you all need to be learning how to grow your own food for your own family. all right guys welcome to the farm again this is the stony ridge farm this is a 150 acre first generation farm here in the foothills of the blue ridge mountains of north carolina and what we're doing today again is working in the garden this is part of my daily routine so i'll come down here I'll work my way through the garden. I'll weed things. If I see any insect problems, I'll take care of those. I don't use any fertilizers or any sprays. It's all natural. So it's all from the farm and or from another farm. It's manure, it's chicken litter, it's chicken manure, and it's all natural stuff, compost, okay? So what we have here is a bed of yellow squash and a bed of zucchini squash. This couldn't be easier to grow, guys, and you don't need to go buy the little plants from the store. You need to just plant them from seed. It's very, very simple. I'll explain the whole process to you. So we're gonna visit the tomatoes, so stick around to the end. We're gonna talk about those, but this is my zucchini squash, guys, and you don't have to weed a whole lot in this zucchini squash, but you can see, got a little bit of grass coming up in here. These are raised beds that I built with the sawmill. I've got a sawmill on the farm, and we have approximately 10 raised beds right now. We'll probably expand that to somewhere around 20. These are late tomatoes in the background. That's why they look a little pitiful. And again, this is our zucchini squash. So part of my, and also, these are sunflowers. These are Goliath sunflowers. I like to plant things concomitantly. In other words, plant them together. If you look in here, you'll see we've got buds. We've got squash buds coming in. Our honeybees are pretty close here. They're right over there. And the chicken coop is right there. So when we have bad veggies and bad fruit, we'll toss it over in the coop and let the chickens eat it. We'll also give our chickens some of this grass. So I don't weed eat right up next to the uh, garden beds. I take this and I'll feed the chickens with it or I'll toss it back on the land and we'll mow it and mulch it in. You can see the yellow squash all down in here. Those guys will mature and get fat. We'll let the buds fall off. You can actually eat the squash bud, which is pretty cool also. All I did to plant these squash, and they don't require a whole lot of nutrient, is simply place the seeds in the ground. So each bed kind of started out like this. And this is where my shallots were planted and my onions were planted. Each bed starts like this. I'll go through, I'll weed the bed, and then I'll place my seeds in the ground. You can expect squash to germinate within about three days. So it'll really jump up pretty quick. You don't need to go to the added expense of buying the doggone pre-planted plants. They sprout just like that. A few pests that you might encounter uh, when you're raising squash are what they call cutworms. And cutworms have gotten one of my squash plants. I'll show you that. And we also have, you'll see some insects eggs on here right here some see this little piece of uh, foliage right here that has some insect eggs on it we can simply take our thumb as long as we're maintaining our garden and just rake those guys off these are eggplants okay pretty low maintenance item you can plant those from seed very very easily and we should start getting eggplants here very shortly now with squash you're going to get a bounty of squash so when you plant this many this is probably eight plants in each bed eight to ten plants you're gonna get a bounty of squash. I've got a Harvest Right freeze dryer in the uh, shop, and that's what we'll do. We'll freeze dry this squash, and we need to plant more. So this bed right here, later this week, will be cleaned up, and I'll plant new squash over here so that we have a constant flow of squash coming in throughout the summer. And there's nothing that says summertime more than good, fresh, delicious, yummy squash. 
Now you can see we've got cutworms in this one right here. So in other words, there's something, we're gonna go ahead and pull, pull this up. Something cuts the uh, root of this plant and destroys its ability to reproduce. So this right here, that goes in the chicken coop. These guys are looking good. These are big boys and better boys. These are the big boys. Those are the better boys. Big boys seem to be doing better and be a little bit more drought tolerant. As you look down in here, you'll see eggshells. There are eggshells that I incorporate into the soil along with my compost to help prevent a illness called, or a predicament called blossom end rot. Blossom end rot looks similar to this. This is a, this is a summertime heat problem, but blossom end rot would be black right there. Now all we do, since we've got our chickens, I'll toss that over in the coop. Chickens will chow down right there. So it's an ecosystem, guys. It's all about a cyclic ecosystem. Got a little moldy uh, tomato, and you're going to have bad tomatoes. It's just going to happen. A little rotten tomato there. That's why you have chickens. The ultimate farm garbage disposal right there. So guys, I just thought I'd point you in the right direction when it comes to planting squash. It is not too late for you to plant your own squash this year. You can keep planting it all summer long. Now typically if you want to grow some uh, pumpkins, around the week of the 4th of July is when most people plant their pumpkins and I may end up putting some pumpkins over in that bed right there. So I hope this helped you guys take away the fear of uh, planting a garden. If you want to do raised beds, you don't have to have a sawmill. You can build your own raised beds. Lastly, we're going to go up and I'll show you some cool raised beds that we have right by the house. I've got a little salad bar growing right beside the house. It's edible landscapes and it's super easy and you don't need 150 acres to do this. So I'm up here at the house and this proves to you right here that you just don't have to have too much space to grow a garden. So we've got some kale growing in here. We have some hot peppers, some green peppers. We have uh, uh, carrots growing right here. And again, some more kale. And this is my salad bar, okay? So I come out here and I pick myself a salad whenever I want to. There's arugula, there's lettuce, there's all sorts of stuff. It's right here in the salad bar uh, patch right here. And these are some pretty awesome little raised beds. Well, folks, it's just that easy. I hope you enjoyed the little video today. I just wanted to give you a quick tips video on how to plant and grow squash. Go to the store, buy the non-GMO squash seed, put three of those seeds in the ground and place them somewhere between 18 and 22 inches apart and you will have squash within about a month. It's pretty cool stuff, guys. Again, have one raised bed ready. So you harvest one thing, plant another thing. Harvest one thing, plant another thing. And if you don't have chickens, you're missing out on the ultimate garbage disposal and the ultimate composters and the ultimate fertilizers for your property, guys. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I hope you learned a little something. If you have any questions, please post them down there in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, again, I'll post links to these raised beds in case you don't want to build them out of wood for yourself. And you can simply use garden soil and potting soil right from your local hardware store. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. It's a beautiful day. i got to go take care of the cows. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your